Welcome to 321 Exams. Today on biology, we shall be taking a look at the topic sensory receptors and their organs, also known as sense organs. So objective one is to understand the meaning of sense organs. Know, know their functions know their functions know their location location and process for know how to care for them. And then ultimately, number five, answer, answer questions on, answer questions on science organs. So next is sense organs. It is defined as a group of specialized cells, tissue, or, or receptors which are able to receive, perceive, or detect stimuli or stimulus and transmit the information, impulse, or message to the central nervous system. Now let's take a look at types of sense organ. Types of sense organ. There are five types of sense organ: the eyes, the ear, nose, tongue, and skin. This each of these sense organs have nerve endings, which receive impulse and relay them to the spinal cord or or brain. Then let's take a look at receptor. A receptor is a, is a sensory cell which receives stimuli initiates and transmits an impulse through the neurons to the brain, spinal cord, and central nervous system. It is very important that we should uh, follow this very carefully and also encourage you to still also go, to, go through your, the topic on uh, uh, coordination and control where I treated extensively nerve, uh, nervous system and the hormonal system so that you get a better understanding of this. Now let's take a look at the types of sensory receptors and the stru structures. This varies from simple to complex. The free endings, such as the dendritic endings, this is found in skin surfaces, mammas, and is in simplest form. Then we have the more complex form. This consists of two groups or more cells that are not neurons, but are specialized to detect the stimuli called the sens sen sensory cells. They form synapses with sensory neurons. Examples are taste receptors. Most complex are those uh, secondary cells with organs contain sensory cells that are, so that are associated with the structures that aid in transmission of impulses. So impulse needs to be transmitted. Now, like I did say, if you come to, if you look at nervous system that I treat that I treated in uh, coordination and control, you'll get a better understanding of all this. So the physical and mechanical uh, uh, mechanism, in the case of ear, which uses the tympanic membrane through the malleus, the, the malleus, the incus and stapes, and then to the cochlear and auditory nerves and ears. So this will help, help us to understand how this complex or most complex mechanism. Now the skin as a sense organ. The mammalian skin has a rich supply of sensory receptor. This receptor detects what? There are three, there are some of them. This, this detect, the receptors of the, of the skin are the touch, the pressure, the pain, cold, and heat. Not all parts of the uh, human skin has all the receptors fully distributed. For example, if you prick on this, your, on your elbow, you discover that you feel less pain, meaning that 
we we'll have less of pain receptors in this region of the body. Now, if you look at uh, the main sensory receptors, main sensory receptor and the stimuli detected by them, we we'll have the mechanoreceptor, and it's de detected uh, mechanical stimuli such as sound, touch, pressure, gravity, pain, muscular contraction, and vibrations. We we'll have the chemical receptors, chemical receptors such as smell, taste, changes in concentration of substance, nutrients, and in blood. Then we have the chemical receptors. These are essentially thermal stimuli, which detect either cold or heat. We have the photoreceptors and their electromagnetic stimuli, and they detect light, light intensities and colors as well. We also said the sensory nerve endings are unevenly distributed within the skin. Those that are sensitive to pressure, they are called the persona corpuscles. They are found deepest in the skin and therefore require a stronger stimulation to register in the brain. Those that are sensitive to the touch mesenchymal corpuscles are largely distributed to the surface of the skin, especially areas within, without hairs like tongue, forehead, skin, and so on. They need a mild or gentle stimuli to register in the brain. Now let's look at a diagram of the human skin showing the receptor of heat, pain, touch, and so this is the diagram. So here we have the heat receptor, the gentle touch receptor, pain receptor, cold receptor, and hair. And then as well, we have the pressure and the pressure receptor. So these are the receptors that are found in the different layers of the skin. The epidemic, the epidemis, the dermis, the hypodermis. These pressure receptors are located in specific regions. For example, the pain receptors are located in the epidermis. Why the the heat receptors, touch receptors, cold receptors, and pressure receptors are all located in the dermis. It is very important we should take note of that. Touch and pressure. This sensation only differ in intensity. Touch and pressure, touch and pressure receptors are sensitive to small pressures. My pressure receptors are sensitive to big pressures. Locations in the skin. Touch receptors are close to the skin surface. Attached to the skin hairs and follicles, they are readily stimulated by slightest pressure or movement of the hairs. Mesenchymal corpuscles, touch receptors are also situated just below the epidermis. is also a sensitive. It's also sensitive to touch. Of course, they are also co concentrated at the fingertips, the face, the neck. Note that blind people use the sense of touch by using their fingertips to read braille and identify objects. It is very important that touch receptors are very important. Even if you don't feel, if you're not able to feel the sensation of touch, it becomes a very serious uh, pro neurolog neurological problem. Now, location of pressure in the receptors of the skin. Pressure receptors, also known as persenial corpuscles, are found in a deeper layer of the parts of the dermis and in the joint tendons and muscles. These receptors touch and pressure prevent us from danger. What is the economic importance of this? People suffer from leprosy, for example, a disease that damages the sensory neurons in the skin, hurt, hurt themselves badly because they cannot feel the, the pressure or pain touch, or feel the touch, pressure, or pain. And most people, they always have issues. So it is very important we should take knowledge of this and know the importance. Heat and cold. Heat and cold, these sensations are detected by thermal receptors. This makes us to be aware of the danger of temperature rather than the temperature itself. It is, that is, they can only tell us about the presence of heat or cold, but not the specific degree of heatness or coldness. So heat and cold are very, location of receptors of cold and in the skin. Most thermal receptors are free, are free dendritic and is located in the epidemis and then is some Special dermis increase in the capsules for detecting hot and cold. White thermal receptors play a very important role in regulating temperature of mammals, which are warm-blooded animals. Pain. Pain receptors provide acute warning to, of damage to body tissues. This consists of small filing branched, consists of small filing branch endings. Overstimulation of pressure on receptors and thermal receptors cause pain sensations. Special pain receptors are known as 
no C receptors are also present. It is also important that pain receptors is very, very important because we can hurt ourselves without knowing that. For example, you have a cut and you are bleeding. You are not aware that you are bleeding because you do not feel pain during the cut. Such sensation can be very deadly. So it is very important an individual should know that uh, the pain is, uh, uh, I mean, pain receptors are very important. Location of pain receptors, they are, location of pain receptors in the skin, they are found near the surface of the skin in the epidermis where tissue damage or cut can easily be occur and also found in internal organs like heat and pectoralis muscles. Sensitive of pain varies throughout the body. It is very high at the surface of the abdomen and surface of the eyes than the fingertips and near absent at the elbow joints. Stretch receptors. These are sensory receptors wrapped around specialized muscle fibers called the spindle fibers. They are located deep inside the skeletal muscles, causing the spindle fibers to elongate and stimulate the nerve endings of the stretch receptors to fire. Once these stimulus are analyzed from the various stretch receptors, the brain is able to monitor the position and movement of the body and so maintain balance. Organs of smell. The organs of smell, also known as the nasal cavity. In the mammals, the nose is which the nose. In mammals, the nose which enters into the nasal cavity is the organ for smell. It contains the olfactory chemoreceptors at the roof of the nasal cavity of men. It extends into the epithelial surface of the nasal cavity, into the epithelial surface of the nasal cavity, mucosa, and then it is built by a thin film of mucus, which traps air vapor chemicals in the chemoreceptors, then send signals to the brain for action. Humans have comparatively poor sense of smell, unlike dogs that have high sense of smell. Now this is diagram of the nasal cavity showing the olfactory lobes. So when uh, air vapor enters through the nasal cavity, it is trapped by these olfactory nerves and then transmitted by the cribriform plate, the crib cribriform plate, which houses the olfactory bulbs. These olfactory bulbs are a collection of olfactory nerves, which then transfer uh, in, uh, impulses through the olfactory tract. So the olfactory tract actually takes sense of smell to the brain for transmission and interpretation. Process involved in the perception of smell. Particles of volatile chemical substance in air dissolve the mucous layer of the smell receptors in the nostril, as I've explained using the diagram. The stimulation of these receptor cells located inside the olfactory bulb at the base of the brain give rise to nerve impulses which travel through the olfactory nerve to the olfactory lobe of the brain. Therefore, the brain interprets the kinds of smell, which I've explained using that diagram. So this is the exact process of smell. The nerve is organ of taste, tongue, gustatory, gustatory function. The tongue is the organ. The tongue is the organ responsible for taste, for sense of taste, and are grouped into taste buds located on the tiny swelling on the exposed surface of the tongue, on the soft palate and in the epithelia of the mouth. It is important to know that it is not only the tongue that is sensitive to taste. Within the soft palate, that is the upper part of the roof of the mouth, just the part that is soft, also have taste buds. And of course, within the wall of the inside of the mouth, there's also taste buds. So taste buds lie in the grooves. Taste buds lie in, lies on the groove or surface of the tongue. The taste receptors are specialized sense organs that synapse with sensory neurons of taste. Chemicals have been dissolved in this, chemicals have to be dissolved in this form to stimulate the taste receptors. There are four types of basic tests. Sweet, sour, bitter, and salty taste. These are the four major all flavors combine, all flavors are a combination of these four tastes. So here we have the diagram of the tongue showing buds. So this is the tongue, this is the inner part, we have the palatine tonsils. So these are taste buds. 
These are taste buds. And the taste buds are classified as folate papillae, circumvolate papillae, filiform papillae, and form. Actually, it is also called folate, folate, filiform, and fungiform. We usually call it the four F, uh, the three F, the three F of taste. So they are all important in the taste mechanism. The, this part does not, this area does not show which of the sections of the part that is uh, sensitive to the different types of taste. But I want us to know that, I want you to look at these three major types. It is from these three, as well as the circumvillate papillae, we tell you which of them, which part is involved in detecting different types of taste. With this, this brings us to the end of this lesson. Do hope to see you in our next lesson.